In this video, we will give a brief overview of GraphDB Workbench in REST API. Let's get started. The GraphDB Workbench is an administration web-based interface for the database, allowing all sorts of administrative operations to be performed over it. It is similar to the RDF4J Workbench web application, but is much easier and intuitive to use and offers more functionality. The Workbench is a standalone application that can be run and connected with the database by just providing a configuration parameter when it is started. The Workbench has a left side menu bar, which includes a number of convenient pull down menus that allows you to manage repositories, load and export data, execute Sparkle queries and updates, monitor queries, manage connectors, users and permissions, and provide REST API for automating various tasks for managing and administrating repositories. Let's take a look at the next slide. Here you can see the options provided by the import menu. It allows you to import data in different serialization formats through uploading RDF data from local files, from files on the server where the workbench is located, from a remote URL, or bypassing the RDF data in the text area tab. You can convert tabular data into RDF and import it into a GraphDB repository using the onto refine data transformation tool. The implementation exposes a virtual Sparkle endpoint, which translates the queries to SQL using a declarative mapping. The explore menu provides options to look at the default graph and all named graphs in GraphDB show the hierarchy of RDF classes by a number of instances. If you click on a particular class, you can see a side panel showing its local name, IRI, and a list of its first 1,000 class instances. You can see a complicated diagram showing the relationships between RDF classes, each represented as a bundle of links between the individual instances of two classes. The other options of Explore allow crafting a visual representation of parts of the data graph and enable the use of similarity indexes to look up semantically similar entities in text. Graphs Overview provides a list of the default graph in all named graphs in GraphDB. You can use it to inspect the statements in each graph or export the graph in the format of your choice. Now let's look at executing queries with GraphDB Workbench. The Sparkle menu takes you directly to syntax-directed Sparkle Query, an update editor, where you can write and execute your queries. It also allows you to render your query results as table, raw response, pivot table, or Google chart, and download them in different formats like JSON, XML, CSV, and others. You can use different metrics for analyzing the state and the performance of the database. The monitor section gives you the opportunity to view all running queries or updates, and to terminate them by pressing the abort button. The resource option shows you the usage of various systems resources, such as used memory, threads, system CPU load, and class count. In the setup menu, you can manage and create new repositories or connect to remote locations, manage users and their access, create and manage GraphDB connectors instances, create or modify a cluster, view use namespaces, enable autocomplete, and add JDBC configuration. The current repository menu item allows you to pick from a list of repositories and provides information for the currently connected repository. Now, let's look at creating a repository. You can create a new repository by selecting a repository's menu item. GraphDB supports different types of repositories. The master one keeps a log of the recent transactions, accept queries and updates from clients, and forward them to users. All workers' repositories keep a full copy of the repository data, answer queries, and execute updates. The on-top repository enables direct access to relational databases with Sparkle queries by translating data stored in an SQL database to a virtual Sparkle endpoint. FedEx repositories provide a transparent federation of multiple Sparkle endpoints under a single virtual endpoint. In the Help menu, you can find external links to GraphDB documentation, Developer Hub, Support, and view the configuration values of the Java virtual machine running the GraphDB Workbench. 
Looking at another important feature, GraphDB allows you to work with the Workbench REST API, which can be used to automate various tasks without having to open the Workbench in a browser and doing them manually so developers can script CURL calls in their applications. As you can see, there are several REST API functionality groups, cluster management, data import, location and repository management, saved queries, and others. If you click on a functionality group, you can expand it and see the operation it includes. For example, let's get saved queries. Here you have options to specify if you want to get all of them or get a single saved query by name and owner. If you want to get a single query, you have to specify its name. And then, if you click the Try It Out button, you will see detailed responses which show CURL command, request URL response body, response code, and headers. The response body section is in JSON format and shows query name, query body, owner, and indicates whether it is a shared query. In addition to this, you have the opportunity to use GraphDB with the RDF4J API. You can use the RDF4J API to create and access GraphDB repositories both on the local file system and remotely via the RDF4J HTTP server. For example, to get the number of statements of a given repository, you have to select the appropriate functionality group. The chosen one on this slide will give you the number of statements in the repository or in the given context. When you click Try It Out button and look at Response Body section, you will see the number of statements for the entered repository name. 